Okay, and since you've been with me for so long, I'm gonna show you the nicest and the best feature ever in Trailblazer. So if you wanna see what is going on on the inside, there is this amazing method called what the fuck. So you just replace call with what the fuck. And now when you run your operation, check this. It shows you the actual flow of the operation and that is so helpful. And now check out how this works for failing operations. So I'm gonna use what the fuck for my validation tests. And you can actually see that extract params failed and that's why the operation ended on the failure terminus. And now imagine using what the fuck in a deeply nested operation setup because lots of companies and projects use Trailblazer in a very complex way with lots of deeply nested operations. The tracing will show you visually where the operation failed and what path the operation execution took. And that is so bloody helpful. I love this feature. We have two more steps to add on the success track. So let's go for it. I'm adding a step method to create the model. I call it create model and here we go at the context. And we actually need the my params in here to pass that into the active record call and we need a current user here and i'm just going to copy over the original code into that step method and um, we don't have instance variables we have local variables and we have changed this to my params and we all learned that we don't use instance variables we actually use the context to write to so we say blog post equals, and then we use active record to create this. And do not forget to add this step to the actual operation. So step create model does the trick. And I'm changing this to author, since this is the field that we are supposed to fill and run the test. And you already guessed it, we are not passing in a current user. So we have a missing keyword current user. And now look at the trace from what the fuck. So it actually shows you which step method was raising this exception. That is, again, another feature that has saved me thousands of hours. Oh, okay, let's make it maybe a couple of hundred of, of debugging. So what we need to do is we have to pass the current user into the operation. And we do that in our test where we invoke the operation, obviously. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a current user key here and maybe some random string because it doesn't really matter. And this is how we pass the dependency current user into the operation. Let's see if it works. And look what we get, unknown keyword params in create model. What happened? Oh, right, you told us to use the double split. This means we're gonna ignore the params variable here. And it passes, yay. And in order to finish this success track, I'm gonna copy the save call to the create model step because you don't have to have a step for each line in your refactoring. This is completely up to you, but this makes sense right here. So we create an active record model and then we call the save method on it. And keep in mind that save will return true or false depending on whether or not it was successful. And this indicates to Trailblazer that this step was run successfully or not. And I'm gonna add another step for the actual notification. And I'm gonna use the blog post keyword to grab the model we just created in this prior step. And I'm copying over the code and it's so much fun. We don't use instance variables, do we? And it's kind of important to understand that within those step methods, you can use arbitrary Ruby code that you use all across Rails or whatever. So lots of people will usually ask if you can use active record or if you can use mailers or something in Trailblazer or in Trailblazer operations, and obviously you can. This is just pure Ruby. Obviously I need to add the notify step to the operation. And let's change our tests to reflect those changes. So I don't wanna waste time on testing the mailer, but what we need to test is whether or not that model was actually created, because that is kind of what the operation exists for. And here comes how you test other side effects that, than testing whether or not the operation was run successful. So now we wanna test 
attributes of the model that we created. And here is the missing link for that. So the result object not only exposes success and failure, it also exposes all the variables that you wrote to context. So I can say result blog post and that for example, gives me the model that we created on the inside of the operation. So the result object basically acts like a context enriched with success and failure. And it's the only way to compute side effects such as an object that you created on the inside of the operation to the outer world. So you have to use the result object to grab or retrieve values from the operation. And so what I do is I, I, I test whether or not those attributes are correct. So this is kind of boring stuff, but it's necessary. And we also want to test what the author looks like if we actually assigned the current user to the model. So I'm running the test and it passes. Good job. We did it.